is this a new world of uh, <laughs> playing uh, conference games during out of, out of, the, out of the gate? Yeah, you know, it's, it's very different, obviously, and it uh, calls for a different level of urgency. Um, not that there's not always a sense of urgency, but this is a little bit different because of the implications of it being a conference game, uh, such a talented and athletic opponent right away. You know, for a player, I'm, I'm sure they love it because you want to be in those types of games. For a coach, it's, it's like a nightmare because you're constantly questioning are you prepared? You know, have you done enough? Have you gone over this? Have you, you know, all of these different things? And so, um, you know, we're excited about it. We're excited, obviously, that it's at home. You know, we're hopeful that we have an amazing crowd and that we can come out and play worthy enough of having a chance to win the game. How big of a showcase is this for your program? I mean, a lot of new changes around the building, new team, big opponent. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, we, we, as a basketball program, don't get into that stuff. Like it's, it's, you know, as my dad used to say, we, we have enough to say grace over thinking about Florida State. Um, you know, we're obviously very, very proud of, of, of the changes that have been made with the colors and flipping the court, obviously the scoreboard, um, the video boards in the end zone, all those things, we're very proud of that. And you know, with it being a national TV game and people getting to see that right off the bat, you know, we're extremely proud of that. But at the same time, you know, we, we, we have an incredible challenge in front of us with, with playing against such a talented and athletic team. Um, that that's been our main focus. But but it will be, you know, good for people to see those things. Jeff, do you have a better sense of, of what you have now than, than a year ago? Definitely uh, more than a year ago. Um, you know, for, for all of us last year, everyone, players, everyone, everything was new. And now there's, you know, familiarity. I, I can tell you personally, I feel so much more comfortable in Pittsburgh. Not that I didn't feel comfortable last year, but I, I know my way around now. I don't, I don't have to get on Waze or Google Maps anymore for a lot of the places that I go. Um, and so I do feel better about where we are. I do think that I have a better feel about where we are. And, and you know, we still have a long ways to go to get to where we want to be. But I think we're taking the necessary steps to make that happen. Coach, what did you tell uh, Eric and Terrell about, excuse me, uh, handling Florida State's two, two bigs, the seven footers? Yeah, you know, it's not just them. It's, it's everyone. You know, we, we can't be a a team defensively that is just individual matchups. You know, we have to collectively defend. I think the better defensive teams, they do it where you have five guys acting as one on the defensive end. And we have to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it starts with the pressure that you can put on the basketball. Um, if you can be active, if, if you talk, if you communicate, all those things help post defenders. If you have a post defender that's active, that talks, that communicates at a really high level, usually those are teams that have a chance to become elite defensively because there's an inside boy. So I think they all go hand in hand. And so it's not just those two guys, it's it's everyone doing their part and us collectively being a good defensive team. I know the personnel is probably different for, for both sides, but how much do you look at last year's game with Florida State? You know, we look at some, um, you know, we look at it some just because that's all we have. We don't, we don't have anything of them from this year. That's one of the things that makes it hard playing this type of game early because you don't have anything. And so all we can go by is last year, you know, NCAA tournament games. Uh, we've watched some games from early in the year when they played, trying to see how they were early compared to when we played them in early January to seeing them in March. Um, you know, I think the makeup of both teams is different. The one thing I know about them, because they are an established program, is that they have their standards, they have their absolutes. And it's gonna be, you know, disruptive defensively. They're gonna be athletic, they're gonna be all over the glass. You know, they wanna create offense from their defense. They're gonna be well coached, they're gonna be tough. Um, 
They're going to be tough-minded. They're going to be incredibly disciplined. And so we know that about them. You know, we know some of the personnel, but that's their personnel from last year. We don't know the the improvements that Forrest has made or Vassal or MJ Walker or, you know, Gray. You know, those guys, Polite. You know, those are guys that played for him last year. But, you know, we also saw him so early. And so, you know, we have looked at some of those things, but we know they're a little bit different. I hope we're a little bit different in the fact that we're a little bit better. And then hopefully uh, we can play really well on Wednesday. How big of a loss is Wilson Frame? Who can pick up his scoring to on the arc? You know, it's it's a big loss because of his ability to shoot the basketball and to spread the defense. Um, you know, I don't know if we have one guy that can do that. Also, Jared was very experienced. You know, he has a really good – he had a really – he has – a really good feel for how to play basketball. He's a better passer than you thought. He's a strong kid. He's a strong-minded kid. Um, and obviously his ability to shoot the basketball at a high rate. Um, I don't know if we have one person, but I think collectively overall, I think we've improved the talent level. And so hopefully we can have multiple guys step up and shoot the ball. You know, Hopefully Trey and Xavier can be a little bit more consistent in shooting the basketball. Hopefully all these can be more consistent with shooting the basketball. And our new guys, Ryan Murphy, you know, we think he can shoot the ball, but he's got to be able to show it in games. Uh, Justin can shoot it. Gerald can shoot the ball. And so, you know, it's, it's, you can shoot it, but can you make it? And Jared was able to do that. And hopefully we have some guys step up and do that this year. Coach, do you expect Trey and Xavier to be guarded differently, differently by Florida State than they were last year? Yeah, I would expect that. I, I would expect, you know, if you look at it, if you just look at the stat sheet, you'd say, okay, we got to figure out a way to take those two out of the game. Those are the two guys that that really had outstanding games against them. And I think between them, if I'm not mistaken, I think they shot 28 free throws. I think they were 27 for 28 from the foul line. And so I could see them maybe doing some different things. But at the same time, they, they, they are a very proud program and they have their absolutes. Sometimes that's a little bit hard to switch those, to switch who you are. Uh, but I know that their antenna, I know Florida State's antenna will be up, um, you know, a lot more for those two guys, particularly, really for all of us, but especially those two guys. Coach, how do you define this team's identity early, or is that something you have to craft through? Yeah, it's something experience? we're still trying to figure out. I mean, that's, that's a big thing for us. It'll be an ongoing process. You know, we're not a a veteran team and we haven't been with the guys long enough. We don't have guys established enough in our program where they can completely teach everything like a Trent Forrest can for Florida State. He's so ingrained in the program and there's been such continuity in their program for us. We're still trying to do that. You know, I'm hopeful that our identity will always be that we fight, we compete, there's a toughness about us and that we play intelligently. Now, we haven't shown all those things all the time. I think most of the time we've done that, especially the first ones. The intelligent part, we have to still continue to get better with. Um, but we're trying to establish that as a program right now. Jeff, how much stock will you put into measuring any sort of intangibles, perhaps? How these guys will handle a, you know, a big conference opponent coming in here, as you mentioned, national TV and so forth. Is that something that you'll measure? The, and, you know, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the that is one of the really good things about this game is that you get that right away. You get a national TV game. So how are guys when the lights come on? You know, I, I, I'm hopeful, incredibly hopeful that the crowd is really, really good. How do we react to that? How do we respond to that? Obviously playing against a big time opponent. Um, and so you have all these factors that will be new. So we will look at that, see how we respond to it. and. One of the great things about it is that it's early. It's the first one. You have a lot more left. And so it's a lot we can learn. You know, we, we, we certainly want to learn with a win. Uh, but regardless of the situation, it's, it's, it's an incredible opportunity for us to learn about our team right away. Now going back to last year in the post game with Florida State and how you're speaking now, you have a lot of respect for Leonard, Leonard Hamilton and how he runs his program. A huge amount of respect. Uh, I think he's been – one of the better coaches in college basketball for a while. And his journey to becoming a head coach is amazing. And he's been a guy in the profession that's been uh, <clears throat> very incredibly supportive of me, um, of my family. He's a guy that my dad had a ton of respect for. Um, you know, I think he's a big time man. 
I think he's a big time coach. Um, and I think what he's done at Florida State has been absolutely amazing. The recipe to beat Florida State last year really was, like you said, getting to the line a lot. And then if not winning the rebound battle, at least evening it up. Uh, with a team with that size and that experience, is that one of the keys again this year is to try to get points with the clock off and get rebounds? Well, that's just what we had to manufacture last year. I think last year, I think both teams shot about 34% from the field. And so, uh, you know, we, we were able to go, you know, to get downhill and to attack. And that's what we want to do. You know, it just happened to be that we, we, we got some fouls. You know, we, we got called uh, where we got to the line a lot. And so that just happened in that game. You know, I don't think it happened much after that game for the rest of the year for us. Um, rebounding is imperative. That's something that's really, really important for us. And we know that throughout the year and then not turning the basketball over. I think though, for me, those are the two, those are two of the biggest things. Those are two of the biggest things and then being able to execute offensively and make, and make smart decisions. You know, those are gonna be, and, and what makes it tough is how they defend you. You know, they take you out of stuff. It, it's hard to run a patterned offense against them. Sometimes what you have to do is just play offense and put guys in positions where there's space and there's movement and uh, then, you know, hopefully you have some guys that can break the defense down because they put such great pressure, they take passes away. Um, and so at times it can be difficult to run offense against them. So do you think you're better equipped to be competitive on the boards? I hope so. I'm hopeful of that. You know, we've, it's something we've tried to emphasize. Um, Obviously, against Slippery Rock in the first half, we didn't do a good job. When I went back and watched tape, I think a lot of it came because we gave up penetration. Uh, I thought we were much better in the second half. We made you know a couple of adjustments defensively. And I thought that helped. But obviously, Florida State's a lot different from Slippery Rock, and so you know we'll see. You know that's that that's a big key for us this year. Um, I think with the experience that we have. And then adding a little bit more size, hopefully we can do a better job than we did last year. Yeah. Do, you see, do you see moments of uh, Ideas and Trey and Xavier being leaders on, on the court at practice and in the locker room? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it since the, since the spring, certainly in the summer. Um, those guys have had growth. They, they've had big time growth, and hopefully it, it shows up in production. They pull, the pull guys aside and talk to them? Like they've done that. Um, vocal and practice and huddles. Um, they've done all of those things. Coach, you said you expect Xavier and Trey to be guarded differently this year. You could see them get frustrated last year when guys would clog the lanes and keep them out of, uh, keep them from driving. What did they show you this summer and spring and through these first few uh, practices and training camp that they're ready to adjust to those? Well, I just think the growth. You know, last year, all of the experiences that happened were very new to them. Um, you know, you go from, you know, your non-conference and having some success there and then the first four conference games having a little bit of success and and then all of a sudden, you know, when you play from there on out, everyone's antennas are up to, you know, to you. And then how do you adjust? Sometimes that adjustment is, is more difficult to make as a freshman because it's all new. On the top of that, you know, you're playing 30 plus minutes a game and there's a lot of pressure on you. So I think just natural growth and development uh, from freshman to sophomore year should help them. I think some of the things they've tried to work on that they've worked since they tried that they've worked on to improve their games, decision making, getting stronger, um, you know, being able to hopefully shoot the ball a little bit more consistent. And then hopefully some of the things that we've done as a program, you know, hoping that we've added a little bit more talent, guys that can make some shots. So if they do clog those lanes, you know, there are going to be some openings somewhere, and hopefully we can make them pay for that. Coach, what kind of positives have you taken from the last couple of practices since the Slippery Rock game? I think we've had great attitudes. I think we've worked really, really hard. Um, I think our attention to detail has been good. You know, we've been locked in and focused on trying to get prepared for this game, knowing that this is a different type of opponent. You know, again, one of the reasons we, we, we wanted to scrimmage Maryland 
was to try to simulate the size, the athleticism, um, you know, the length at Florida, you know, that we would see in this first game against Florida State. And uh, hopefully we've improved really since then. Obviously we knew that Slippery Rock was not going to have that same type of size, length, athleticism, and talent. Uh, but I thought we did some really good things in that game. Um, I think we've done some good things over the past few days of practice and we have one more day to prepare and, and hopefully we can play really well on Wednesday. How did you stand up to Maryland? We did some good stuff. We, we did some good stuff to them. They're a really, really good team. They're a top 10, top five team, veteran team. They're very good, <laughs> very, very good. But I thought we did some really good stuff in this game. Jeff, you mentioned having to use ways and Google Maps or whatever. Did you get lost at any point last I don't think I got lost because I always had that. I didn't try it. This is I'm a country boy, so being here in the city and trying to navigate bridges and one-way streets and uh, tunnels and different things like that that's that's a little bit much for me. A little bit too fast-paced from you know from what I've been you know accustomed to. So I I didn't because I had that. Now if it froze, I was messed up. Which it did a few times. I maybe had a bunch of people honking at me from behind and throwing up some fingers. Uh, but that's okay. I found my way. Jeff, when you talk about the communication needed under the under the basket on defense, can that aid the rebounding this time? Before? Yes, all of it goes hand to hand. You know, again, if you look at the really good defensive teams, you can hear them. You, you, you can always hear a good defensive team because they talk. Talk is the thing that unites. Talk is the thing that connects. Really in anything, but especially in a team sport. And, you know, what it does is that it, it, it should put you in the right position. It's not just talk, it's commanding. And it should put you in the right position, in the correct position. And if you're in the correct position, then you have a greater chance to rebound the basketball. Because if you're in the right position, then hopefully you aren't getting beat on straight line drives. Hopefully you don't have to do a lot of help in recovery. Um, but again, a big part of that is talk. It's, it's the thing that unites a really good team. And if you look at the teams in our league, you know, historically that have been really good. I think the best defensive team since he's joined the league has been Tony Bennett's Virginia team. And it's, 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 really frustrating to play against them. But as a fan of basketball, it's beautiful to watch because they're connected the whole time. And a big reason is that they're constantly talking on the defensive side of the ball. And it usually translates to good offense too. Um, and that's something we're, we're, we're trying to create those habits. You, you talk a lot about talk. Is, is that something that, that's a different concept for young players to grasp? It is, it is. It's something that I was taught, you know, when I was a player. Um, and I didn't learn about it. I didn't really completely understand it until I went to college, and it was a point of emphasis uh, for the coach that I played for. Um, it was something that was taught by the older guys in the program, and by the time you become a sophomore, junior, and senior there, you, it, it's, it's a responsibility to teach that. Um, again, the program in, you know, in which I played, I, I think is one of the best programs in the, country, in the history of college basketball, and a big reason for that is the communication system. And it's something we're trying to build here. Thank you guys. All right.